Kyle Brush was a skateboarder trying to do life on his own, but it led him into darkness. Surrounded by drugs, alcohol, and abuse, he finally surrendered and is using his skills to further the gospel. Growing up, I've been incredibly blessed with parents that taught me about Jesus, you know, took me to church. My dad is very influential in my life. He has taught me how to build. He's taught me a lot of life skills. And when I was in seventh grade, I found this group of kids that I just thought were like the coolest thing ever. And they were skateboarders. You know, I wanted to be a part of that group. And so I bought my first skateboard and I kind of weaved my way into that middle school crew of skaters. I was drawn deep into this stereotypical skate culture where focus is throwing yourself around on a skateboard, partying, you know, seeking girls. And so the good character that my parents had given me and instilled in me was kind of stripped away by the people that I started to surround myself with. And that carried into middle school, high school. My senior year, I had this girlfriend for about three months. And two weeks after I graduated, she came to me and told me that she was pregnant. And I was still 17 at the time. And my world was just like crushed uh, in a sense because I had all these aspirations, you know, I thought I was gonna go to college. I had things like I wanted to move to California. I wanted to skate and do all of that type of stuff. Finding out that I was gonna be a dad um, at 17 and then 18 years old um, was just a crazy moment. And like all of the sin and things that I had tried to hide from my parents uh, kind of came to a head because you can't hide uh, the fact that your girlfriend's pregnant. I decided that, you know, I was gonna man up. I was going to be the best dad that I could to our child, but come to find out uh, a few months after finding out that she was pregnant, we went to an ultrasound and the ultrasound tech, you know, is just nonchalant doing her thing. And she's like, here's baby A and here's baby B. And they both look healthy. And my jaw just like dropped to the ground to find out that we were gonna have twins. I had to figure out you know, how to man up and how I was gonna provide. And, but my life was still a spiraling mess. I was far from the Lord. I was still like trying to hide all my uh, pain and like void that I had in my life with alcohol and with, you know, I was super angry. I was kind of bitter at my situation and watching all of my peers and all of my skate friends like moving on in life and here I am just kind of stuck. It made me a bitter and angry person. And it was very divisive for the twins mom and I, but like we barely knew each other and we were moving in together and uh, just fighting all the time. And it was just a really toxic environment, just pulled me deeper into trying to fill my void with anything I could, drinking or, you know, going out and skating harder. I was just failing. The twins were about a year, year and a half old, and I just, I had to get out of that environment. So I became a single dad uh, now at 20 years old with twin daughters and trying to figure out this joint custody thing. It just led me deeper and deeper into this dark darkness. One day I was working for my dad now at the time in construction. I showed up late for work and he wasn't excited about that. And it just uh, all weighed down on me. I just broke down and my dad saw this and being the strong Christian man that he is, he, he pulled me aside and we sat on a piece of concrete and we just prayed that God would provide. And that was a moment where I saw a glimpse of you know, God working behind the scenes and, and how he still cared for me. And I met Molly two weeks after, and she's one of the biggest blessings that has ever happened in my life. And she was a believer and she took me on with, you know, the struggles and even the toxic things. We were married within a year. Um, we had a son together. And now as a dad of three kids, still going through court battles, still going through this divisive relationship from my past with the twins' mom. I was still in a dark place. Even though I saw that glimpse of God working, I was still in a dark place. The marriage between Molly and I was starting to crumble too. And I just came to this place where 
I was so beat down by trying to do all of this on my own. And I just prayed like, Lord, just give me a purpose in this mess. Um, give me peace. I will go anywhere and I will do anything that you want me to do. Just like pull me out of this. And shortly after that, I had this first Holy Spirit experience where um, I felt like the Lord was was trying to trying to tell me something. And over and over and over again, I heard, use the tools I've given you to further the kingdom. And as I prayed about it, as I thought about like, what does that mean? As I continued to seek that as a baby believer, it became very clear that the Lord was trying to tell me like, use skateboarding and use your ramp building abilities to tell people about me. And so in 2012, I had this vision to start Truth Skate Church. And I was still shy, I was still introverted. Like the idea of talking in front of people and just like leading Bible studies or talking to parents or whatever would come my way as a, now like a skateboard ministry leader, interacting with young people just scared the heck out of me. But what the Lord started to do is he started to mold and shape me into this person where I found my voice where I found my boldness and my ability to share the gospel boldly, to uh, just come alongside these kids, to be the person that I needed when I was younger. I built a few ramps, we set them up in a church parking lot, and I started to see this fullness of like what a life in Jesus can do. Like I had purpose, I had more peace in my life. We saw dozens of kids coming out and we saw the need for an indoor space and so, uh, that winter of 2012, short like six months after starting Skate Church, we found our first indoor park and built it out. It was 1,500 square feet, just packed wall to wall with ramps and kids just started flooding in the door. Within six months of being in that indoor space, we had already outgrown it and just praying about, you know, Lord, what is the next step? Where do you want us to go? And talking to our landlord, a space had become available in the same building and it was 7,000 square feet, the space that you guys can see today. We've uh, now been traveling, doing community events, taking our portable skate park, doing demos, sharing the gospel with people all over the US. 2018, the opportunity came that we could take this international. And so I took my first trip to Africa in 2018. I've been back there three times since then. We've been to Costa Rica, we've been to Italy, I've done work in Canada, and God just like continues to open up these doors of opportunity. Like I prayed uh, on, my, on the side of my bed, like, Lord, I'll go anywhere and I'll do anything that you want me to do. One of the biggest blessings is we have a peaceful relationship with the twins mom now, like that's huge. We're no longer fighting in court, we no longer battle each other and try to get the upper hand. It's like we have a peaceful co-parenting relationship. Her and my wife are friends. And that was one of the biggest like glimpses of, all right, this is what a full life in Christ looks like. I have peace, I have joy, I have purpose. He's definitely given me opportunities and things to do and to share the good news and share my story and testimony and share the gospel, the most important thing over the last 11 years. And uh, it's all just messing around on this thing we call the skateboard and uh, using it as a platform to share Jesus with people all over the world. God is so cool. He does the most amazing things with our yes. And Kyle came to this point of surrender when he was trying to just do life his own way. Obviously, he was just in darkness. He was in the pit of despair. He was broken. He was hopeless. But he came to this point of surrender and he said, God, I will do whatever you ask of me. And God said, I have a plan for you. I've given you these skills and these talents and these gifts, use them to further the kingdom of heaven. It just reminded me of this scripture, Matthew 5, 3. It says, blessed are the poor in spirit for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Another translation, another way of saying blessed are those who are poor in, poor in spirit is blessed are those who are coming to the end of their selves at the end of their rope when they can't go any further and they just cry out to God. And you might be there today. 
you might just be like totally broken and not sure what to do. You're at the end of your rope. You don't know if you can go further. My encouragement to you, my friend, would be to cry out to your heavenly father because the scripture says those who do that, theirs is the kingdom of heaven. God will come, <clears throat> excuse me, and answer your prayer. So if that's you today, cry out to your heavenly father. If you, wanna, if you want somebody to come alongside of you in that prayer, please don't hesitate. Give us a call right now, 1-800-700-7000. We've got amazing prayer warriors that just wanna come alongside of you, speak life over you, and speak the name of Jesus over your situation. Don't hesitate to do it right now. Give us a call, 1-800-700-7000.